So Alfred Hitchcock released To Catch a Thief in 1955 and it couldn't have been more different really than his previous few years work. The film was preceded by a handful of brilliant claustrophobic crime thrillers including Strangers on a Train, Dial In For Murder and that previous year's Rear Window. To Catch a Thief with its French Riviera setting was one of the brightest, most open and visually striking Hitchcock films to that date. The Hitchcock stamp was still present though and we still have that innocent man falsely accused, um, a striking female lead, loads of glamour and romance and a sprinkling of humour. Let's take a look. So in To Catch a Thief we have a very tanned and smooth as butter Cary Grant starring as John Robbie aka The Cat. Um, he was an infamous cat burglar in France before World War II and he would eventually come to fight on the side of the French Resistance Army. Batani said you were something of a celebrity in the underground army. I was in the Resistance. Did you kill many people? 72. So because of his heroic actions during the war, he became a bit of a local hero to many uh, and thus gave up his life of crime. But when a spit of high profile diamond burglaries take place bearing his M.O., Police wonder if Robbie has decided to come out of self-imposed retirement to start his life of crime all over again. Hi right, guys, I'm Stephen at Real Classic Film Reviews. Uh, let me know some of your favourite Hitchcock movies down in the comments and consider subscribing to the channel for more classic reviews just like this one. So in an attempt to discover who's behind the burglaries and work out their next move, Grant buddies up with a British Lloyds of London insurance agent, played by John Williams, and receives a, a list of rich insured clients in the region who own expensive jewels. So not only does Williams help Robbie by providing him with a client list, but also helps set up a chance meeting between Robbie and one of his most influential clients, a rich American widow, Jessie Stevens, played by Jessie Royce Landis, who's come to the French Riviera with her daughter, Frances, played by Grace Kelly. How come you haven't made a pass at my daughter and don't say, oh, mother, to me? Mr. Burns, I asked you a question. Very pretty. Quietly attractive. Mm -hmm. Although Robbie uses a cover story to hide his crime-riddled history from the ladies, Francis eventually guesses at slash finds out about his burgling past and actually seems to enjoy the element of danger accompanying Robbie and his secret, probably looking for some excitement in a life away from her overbearing mother. Now listen, you're a very nice girl, but you've got too much imagination. You go around talking like that about me and I'll wind up in a French jail for something I didn't do. You're going to rob mother first or somebody else? Well, under the circumstances, somebody else. Mm, that's nice. Mother likes you. It comes as no great surprise, however, when said mother's jewels go missing and Francis immediately assumes that Robbie has pulled a fast one over her and her mother and she lets him know as much. You're already caught. I called the police from your room and told them who you are and what you did tonight. Everything? Oh, the boys must have enjoyed that down at headquarters. Realising that he's fallen for Francis, I mean, it's Grace Kelly, uh, he has a race against time to uncover the true identity of the real thief and clear his name. So Cary Grant had actually announced his retirement from film two years before Catch a Thief and I guess you just can't turn down another chance to work with Hitchcock or Grace Kelly. Grant had already worked with Hitchcock on Suspicion in 1941 and Notorious in 1946 and would eventually work with him again in 59 in North by Northwest. Now I do love Cary Grant but there's no point really in trying to pretend that he's an actor with a massive range. Uh, what he does do is play that cheeky but charming debonair gentleman role so well that his name has become synonymous with those words. So Grace Kelly would find herself working with Hitchcock for the third time in two years as she just completed Rear Window and 1954's Dial End for Murder before that. In an interesting side note, it was during the filming of To Catch a Thief that Grace Kelly would also meet her soon-to-be husband, Prince Rainier of Monaco, who ruined it for everyone by sweeping her off her feet and away from the movie business. I mean, this film features Grace Kelly at the height of her powers, immaculately dressed by acclaimed costume designer Edith Head. There's probably not a moment she's on screen that you couldn't pause and put on a magazine cover and Hitchcock knew it. Admittedly though, watching Kelly speed her glorious blue 1953 Sunbeam Alpine down zigzagging French roads is a little bit unsettling these days. These are the same roads she would crash on 27 years later. Kelly tragically died in 1982 at the age of 52 after suffering a suspected stroke at the wheel. So, despite a bit of an uncomfortable 26-year age difference between the leads, they do have a charisma and a chemistry which pretty much carries the whole film. There's a great and famous scene that I love where we get to see Hitchcock's like wicked sensor-busting tricks as he wows the audience with a love scene where everyone remains fully dressed. 
As fireworks explode in the background, Hitchcock cuts quickly between the embracing actors and the fireworks display. A visual metaphor for, well, you know, Hitchcock showing how he's the master of escaping the sense of scissors. It's up there with his finest and cheekiest moments. So ultimately, and honestly, uh, To Catch a Thief's great fun, but can't really be considered suspenseful. Uh, we never witness any real danger or peril in the film, and while it does show Hitchcockian elements, it hardly stands as one of his finest achievements. But to be fair, when these achievements include Psycho, Rear Window, North by Northwest and Vertigo, uh, it'd be a tall order for anyone. That's not to say it doesn't succeed in being light-hearted fun. The first time I saw you was on the beach at Cannes. You swam ashore from a motorboat driven by that little French girl. Uh, you've got an opener? Mm. Thank you. You want a leg or a breast? You make the choice. I mean, To Catch a Thief predates the James Bond franchise by a good seven years. Uh, but if you squint, it almost has that early 007 vibe to it, with a charismatic male lead, a seductive woman, fast cars and intrigue. To audiences of the mid-50s, this must have seemed like opulent escapism. Parts of it even must surely have inspired Steven Soderbergh's Ocean's Eleven sequel. It's funny on uh, re-watching this film after a long time that, considering Cary Grant is a cat burglar, I don't actually think we see him doing any burgling. And for that matter, I'm not sure if he actually makes any real attempt to capture the real thief, uh, with the exception of the almost throwaway and not particularly surprising finale. So the French scenery here looks spectacular and the film features a couple of high-speed car chases filled with quite revolutionary for the time helicopter shots. While being admittedly jerky, they're a great early example of the technique. I mean, it's a stunning movie. Robert Burke's incidentally won a well-deserved Best Colour Photography Oscar for his efforts. I mean, he was helped in no small part by having access to the picturesque French scenery Although there are many scenes here plagued by the rear projection that Hitchcock frequently used. And also having two of the most beautiful actors in cinema history being front and centre. Can't hurt. So Alfred Hitchcock would make a, a dozen or more films after To Catch a Thief. I mean, Vertigo, North by Northwest and Psycho and The Birds, uh, amongst others, were amazingly still to come. So yeah, this is a bit of a throwaway entry into his filmography, but I'm sure there's many a director who'd love to make a film like this and have it be considered a lesser effort. Go check it out.